Welcome to Star Killer Base. Or should that be Starlink Killer Base? Now I know what you're thinking, surely not. That was an Elon Musk idea to give uh, sort of global satellite internet coverage to the world with plans that he was going to do it on Mars as well. It may ultimately do more than just fund Musk's vision for a colony on Mars. SpaceX put in these Starlink terms and agreements that there's a, a bylaws in regards to how their service will be treated for people on Mars. And so SpaceX is already looking down that path. And seeing, okay, well, we can have Starlink satellites around Earth in orbit, but then we can also put them in uh, orbit around Mars, not just a global satellite system, but a multi-planetary satellite system. And we all know that when Elon Musk promises something, he is going to deliver. I mean, just look at the Hyperloop. Create uh, the Hyperloop. And uh, honestly, I think it's a lot easier than, than people think. The blueprints are pretty complicated. Well, blueprints are always kind of complicated. And I mean, yes, there's math. <laughs> and you did yours wrong. There's a whole video on it if you want to take a look. <laughs> but it's really not that hard. It still sounds pretty complicated, Elon. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's, it's really, I swear it's not that hard. <laughs> well, all right, maybe the Hyperloop's not the best example, but I'm sure you got great market penetration with the vertical takeoff and landing supersonic electric jet. At some point, um, I have a design in mind for an electric supersonic vertical takeoff and landing plane. And I think there's a particular opportunity for um, a supersonic vertical takeoff and landing electric jet. Supersonic uh, electric jet. Vertical takeoff and landing electric jet. A supersonic electric vertical takeoff and landing jet. An, an electric jet. Like the, I think the optimal sort of air transport solution is a VTOL uh, electric supersonic plane. Um, well, okay, that one didn't work out either. In fact, it crashes and burns the second you know the first thing about the energy density of um, batteries. Well, what about robo taxis? He's really got it made there, right? It's around the product line with Model Y and Semi, uh, and we expect to have the first operating robo taxis next year, with no one in them, next year. We'll do Model Three S, S three and X as taxis, but um... where he was going to sell you two years ago, I should note, a Tesla for some $30,000 where you could just flip a switch and it would instantly generate some $30,000 profit for you per year as a robo taxi. If you say, what would be the probable gross profit from a single robo taxi? Um, we think probably something on the order of $30,000 per year. The fundamental message that consumers should be taking um, today is that it's financially insane to buy anything other than a Tesla. Because obviously, everyone knows that if you had a magic golden goose that gave 100% return on investment per year, you would sell these golden geese. Because that totally makes sense. Yeah, I, I should probably remind you at this point that to get 5% return on an investment per year is actually pretty good. Elon Musk was offering 20 times this. Huh. Makes you think, doesn't it? It's perhaps the greatest fraud in the history of the Silicon Valley tech bomb. Elizabeth Holmes was everything Silicon Valley and the media could hope for. A brilliant young female entrepreneur who dropped out of Stanford at the age of 19 to start a company called Theranos. This is what happens when you work to change things. And first they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. Forbes magazine has downgraded the net worth of Elizabeth Holmes from $4.5 billion to nothing. I mean, let's just say it's a hypothetical that this wasn't some fraudulent attempt by Musk to sell more Teslas, and that he really had developed this amazing technology. Well, Tesla made some half million cars last year, and he says that they'll generate their own value within a year. So if Tesla had just kept all of these uh, robo-taxis instead of selling them, then this year they would be looking at $15 billion straight profit. Money for nothing. Yeah, we all know that that's not true. So the question comes, would a man who would lie this brazenly to your face lie to you about anything else? Like, say, for instance, oh, I don't know, Starlink. And there's a rather persuading element for SpaceX as well. 
If SpaceX can pull this off, the company could net about 30 to $50 billion a year. Musk and SpaceX president Gwynne Shotwell say that much money could single-handedly fund the development of Starlink, Starship, and SpaceX's Mars launch infrastructure. But for some reason, a billionaire who has discovered actually claims to already have a money printing machine decided, nah, let's, let's not use it. Let's sell it to people because that's what billionaires always do. And if you believe that, I've got some land to sell you. I've just got to wait for the tide to go out first. Although, of course, this year, 2021 started with Elon Musk saying, as he as so often does, that he's confident that it will happen this year. Tesla car next year will probably be 90% capable of autopilot. Like, so 90% of your miles could be on auto. You know, for sure, highway uh, travel. How is that going to happen? Uh, with a combination of various sensors. Um, and for relatively simple roads. Um, I mean, my guess for when we will have full autonomy is about three years. Three years. Approximately three years. I couldn't understand how someone could continuously lie. It really changed my perception of her. I think probably by end of next year, self-driving will be, will encompass essentially all modes of driving and be at least 100 to 200% um, safer than a person by the end of next year. Precisely how Theranos accomplishes all these amazing feats is a trade secret. But it never worked, and there was a series and series and series of deceptive actions that were taking place. We expect to be feature complete in self-driving this year, um, and we expect uh, to be confident enough from our standpoint to say that w we think people do not need to touch the wheel, look out of the window sometime probably around, I don't know, second quarter of next year. Uh, and we expect to have the first operating robo-taxis next year. Like, people should really think about their purchase, uh, any, any, other, any other vehicle. It's, it's basically crazy to buy any other car than a Tesla. Um, the, the convoy technology, the tracking technology, this is something that we are confident we can do today 10 times safer than a human driver. So this is, I want to be clear, this is something we can do now. Around the planet in my hyperloop Actually, only to say this in mid-2021. Tesla CEO Elon Musk said on Saturday that said that making a self-driving car was harder than he expected. Oh, and then you missed that red light, buddy. Not good. Okay, we shouldn't name at this car. This uh, person has done something. Didn't get it. Wow, this is like not good. I stopped it. I had to hit the the, um, the brake. Uh, don't go. It's red. Don't go. Told you. See, it does that sometimes. Like it'll stop at a red light and then be like, I think I'll go. <laughs> okay. And all right. Well, no, it's not correcting itself. So it was aiming for the opposite lane again. Adding that he didn't expect it to be so hard and that the difficulties are obvious with retrospect. Wow, that can't be right. It's just a few years ago, Elon Musk was telling me it would be financially insane to buy anything other than a Tesla. I mean, it's not possibly going to mean fibbing now, is it? I mean, I bought my Tesla just like Elon said I should, but mine's not generating $30,000 a year profit yet. I wonder what went wrong. No matter. I'm sure that sweet Nigerian princess who just needed a few thousand dollars and said that they would reward me with millions for my trusting generosity will be able to give me lots of good advice here. Yeah, not only could they not deliver any robo-taxis at all in 2020, they also couldn't get it to work in 2021 in a looped two-mile tunnel system that they themselves had built. But I've got good news for you today from Tesla. They've just released their full self-driving software um, <coughs> beta version, which for some strange reason comes with a release note saying that uh, it may do the wrong thing at the worst time. So again, how is this full self-driving? And for some reason, it's legal for Elon Musk to risk the lives of people in the public by getting untrained consumers to drive cars around with this software on it. I am not phased by lawsuits. Might have been nice if he could have actually got it working on, say, for instance, his loop system 
first. The FDA was so worried about patient safety that it banned the use of the nanotainer, putting an end to all finger stick tests at Walgreens. County regulators forbid the use of the onboard collision avoidance technology that is part of Tesla's full self-driving system. Tesla's automatic pilot system technically does not rise to the level of fully autonomous. Even though it is branded as such, it is considered even internally, according to exchanges between Tesla and Californian regulators, as an advanced driver assistance system that can automate certain functions. It's, it's basically crazy to buy any other car than a Tesla. I wonder what else the vaporware salesman's got for us. Elon Musk unveiled prototypes of Tesla's solar roof tiles in October 2016. The houses you see around you are all solar houses. I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you, did you notice? Yeah. 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 So. Wow. He's got it ready to go. That's an amazing product release. Oh, yeah. If you believe the vaporware salesman, all you had to do was put down your $1,000 deposit. Tesla's been accepting $1,000 deposits for the roof tiles since May 2017. But at that point, the company wasn't even close to mass producing them. And the key is that it's, it needs to be beautiful, affordable, and, in, and seamlessly integrated. Um, and then if, if, if all those things are, are true, why would you go any other direction? Yeah, so two years after their product release, they were still working out the bugs like, um, did their solar roof tiles actually have decent properties for... Um, you know, making a roof out of. Before we can deploy it to a large number of houses, we need to make sure that, it's, that all elements of the roof are going to last for uh, at least three decades, but ideally sort of half a century or more. Honestly, Elon, I think a good businessman might have figured that out before he announced the release of his product. Uh, that Theranos currently offers more than 200 and is ramping up to offer more than 1,000 of the most commonly ordered blood diagnostic test all without the need for syringes. Was that statement correct? I'm reading it now, I don't think it is. Really? You don't think it is? For years, you were going around lying to people's faces about it, saying how it needed to be so reliable that your mum could use it. I, I think about it as my mom goes to get a test in one of these locations. I want to know every single time that that data is flawless no matter what. The you wouldn't have to have said goodbye too soon to your uncle. But of course, the TED talk was merely an act. In reality, she wasn't even close to her uncle and had just exploited his death for her narrative. Now, after avoiding a million or so blood tests. I'm reading it now, I don't think it is. One of the headlines was $9 billion company down to zero. It's probably the most important question I think anybody who's watching has about this. Does it work? Yes. You're confident in that? I am confident in that. That we are confident we can do today 10 times safer than a human driver. Uh, I feel very confident predicting uh, autonomous rover taxis for Tesla next year. I am absolutely confident that this can be accomplished. I'm, I'm extremely confident uh, of achieving full autonomy uh, and, and releasing it to the Tesla customer base. Uh, next year. I'm confident this can revolutionize cities and get rid of uh, soul-destroying traffic. Yeah, what an interesting tell. Buckle up. Today, a billionaire entrepreneur announced Philadelphia will be a stop on a new super high-speed transportation system. Elon Musk is using rocket technology to build tunnels, and he hopes this test site here in Los Angeles paves the way for a much bigger transit system all across the country. Billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk wants to build a high-speed train connecting O'Hare Airport to downtown Chicago. The Boring Company is now proposing a high-speed underground loop. If this project gets final approval, the riders will try it, they'll like it, and that will spur Boring's expansion. We'll, we'll be able to go like 150 miles an hour if we want. Transporting passengers 40 feet underground at about 30 miles per hour. If you're going that fast, what's to prevent it from crashing into another car ahead of you? That's what I worry about that. Uh, because the autopilot has radar and cameras that you would only be allowed to go through the tunnel on autopilot. That ended up some five years later as slow moving, low capacity, human driven taxis in tunnels or his promise to revolutionize the trucking industry, which again was great until you realize the batteries are big and heavy and long distance haulage is supremely unsuitable for large battery powered electric vehicles. 
Similarly, his promises about revolutionizing the rocket industry by reusing vehicles. Well, even if you believe his own numbers, it only makes it about 10% cheaper than not reusing it. And now... Elon Musk wants me to believe that there is this amazing new laser communication satellite technology. Yeah, the entire video up to this point has basically been summarizing about how when Elon Musk makes these billion dollar idea promises because techno magic, his track record is more that of vaporware salesman. Yeah, looking to have his companies revalued Theranos style than rocket Jesus. Right, so a summary pitch for where I think we are with Starlink. The idea is to encircle the globe with some 40,000 low-flying satellites. Now, according to Elon Musk, those satellites are going to have an operational lifespan of some three to four years, meaning that all 40,000 of these satellites have to be replaced every three to four years. Yes, that's right. The man who was so keen that you should reuse rockets because, well, just letting them burn up would be crazy, is now proposing that the valuable stuff on the top of your rockets, you just let it burn up and replace it every three to four years. Although he later said five years. So we'll, we'll take that to be generous in this case. Which means in about five years, you've got to actually make 40,000 satellites, launch them and generate enough revenue to pay for the system. And of course, the bandwidth for the customers. Because at the moment, this is basically just a router flying in space. And people are going to buy ground stations for about $500. And then they're going to pay about $100 per month for the internet, which is, eh, give or take, twice the price of cable. But it's mostly going to be for people who don't have access to cable, you know, people out in the sticks. I uh, know, as I said, it's, it's, it's really meant for sparsely populated uh, regions. Now, SpaceX actually have something going for them here, which is the Falcon 9, which is a fairly reliable workhorse. But the reality is that typically there are only 100 or so orbital launches per year. So even if you completely monopolize the planet with a launch vehicle like this, it's limited in how far it can go because there really isn't that much of a market for this sort of thing. So basically, you need to launch more stuff. So boom, now they have to launch some 40,000 satellites in five years. So that's about 8,000 a year, stacking the satellites up 60 at a time. You're looking at 60 satellites hurtling into the sky. And over the next few decades, Elon Musk is hoping to send 42,000 of these satellites to space, 15 times the number of operational satellites in orbit today. That's going to be another 100 or so launches per year. Now, the satellites are going to be low level which Musk pimped out as this is for low latency. It's, a, it's to deliver something to customers. And we're targeting latency below 20 milliseconds. Uh, so somebody could, could, could play a, a fast response video game. But I'll bet you dollars to donuts, it's no such thing. It's because when stuff is lower to the ground, you need a less powerful transmitter. It's the inverse squared law. So if it's smaller, it can be lighter and you can launch more of them more easily. However, the reality is that everyone else who has tried something like this has gone bust. In, 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 most of them went bankrupt before even uh, deploying their constellation fully. And, and, uh, and in, even the ones that did just deploy their, their constellation, they, they still went bankrupt. And given that this is a lot more sophisticated than digging a tunnel, and given Elon Musk's track record, summarized at the beginning of this video, yeah, damn right, if I was a gambling man, this, this is like betting on cancer. Now, sure, there are folks out there right now who say that Starlink is awesome for them. Linus Tech Tips in his testing got about 138 megabits per second download and 27 milliseconds latency. But this is, of course, like saying that city travel by car is awesome when there's no traffic. Of course, when no one is using the system, then it's going to be fast. Question is, how fast will it be when there are lots of people using the system? Cool, so let's head over to Elon for some basic numbers here. So uh, we've, we've launched and, and now have active uh, over 1,500 satellites. Um, they're capable of outputting about 30 terabits per second of uh, data. Good. So we know that each satellite can handle about 
20 gigabits per second. Okay, well, your average broadband is going to come in at about um, 20 megabits per second, which means that each satellite is going to start running out of bandwidth at about 1,000 customers. So if people lived equally all over the planet, then the current system could service about 1.5 million people. And this is where all kind of crashes and burns, because people don't live evenly all over the planet. These satellites run at about the same altitude as the International Space Station. So here we are just on the International Space Station. And one of the things you'll notice is it spends an awful long time over the oceans. Most of the planet is covered by oceans. In fact, if we were just to take a look at how many of these satellites are on average over America, well, one and a half thousand satellites over the entire globe, and about 2% of the surface area of the globe is the United States. So there are about 30 satellites over America, which can service about 30,000 people before they start running out of bandwidth. Um, we recently passed the strategically notable number of uh, 69,420 active uh, users. Elon Musk says that the Constellation will be fully operational at 10,000 satellites with an aspirational goal of going up to 40,000 with a plan to release a total of 12,000 over the next five years, half of them by the end of 2024. And Musk wants to add another 30,000 to that. Well, let's take a look at the 10,000 satellite constellation. I did my own numbers for the cost of manufacturing and launching those satellites and came up with about $15 billion, you know, at about half a million dollars for the satellite manufacture and about $60 million for each Falcon 9 launch. Not the most flattering numbers for SpaceX, but you know, but I'm trying to factor in some of the uh, corporate welfare there. And my numbers are not far off where SpaceX has it pegged at. SpaceX's leadership about two or three years ago estimated that they thought it would cost upwards of $10 billion to get Starlink running in an operational capacity. That's a probably a pretty fair estimate still today. They're also comparable numbers to what the common sense skeptic got in his recent takedown of Starlink. Uh, incidentally, given that the government is giving Starlink a billion dollars as a subsidy on this. Last year, the FCC awarded Starlink nearly $1 billion in subsidies to bring internet to rural areas. So this does mean that the entire system launched so far, or the first thousand or so satellites, was effectively entirely paid for by the US government. But ignoring the corporate welfare, this $15 billion constellation of satellites has to be replaced every five years. And you've still got to supply the bandwidth. You know, those satellites are effectively just routers connecting people to the internet. You've still got to pay for their internet connection. So ballpark figures as to what this is going to cost. His current network, he says, has a capacity of some 30 terabits per second for about a tenth of the system. So the full constellation will have a capacity of some 300 terabits per second, which is about 300,000 gigabits per second or about 30,000 gigabytes per second. Not entirely sure how Amazon Web Services run these sort of things, but it looks to be about six cents per gigabyte at its cheapest. So let's say the lowest value of one cent per gigabyte to transfer. So that means that at its cheapest, it's gonna cost about $300 per second to run this system. And at about 30 million seconds per year, that means that you're looking at about $10 billion for the data alone. But I don't know, maybe most networks aren't actually in constant full power use all of the time. So let's just say they only have 10% of this data on their network because, you know, most people aren't using it all of the time. So let's give them their data for a billion dollars per year. So over five years, $5 billion. So now for them, the break-even point is pulling in about $20 billion over five years, or $4 billion a year. Now, customers are going to be paying them about $1,000 a year, so you need about 4 million customers to break even, well, which over the planet doesn't sound so bad. However, remember our numbers from earlier? The system maxes out on about 1,000 satellites, in the US with 30,000 customers. So the full 10,000 satellite constellation will max out at about a third of a million, 300,000 customers in the United States. And those have to be spread evenly over the country. So now to break even, you need 3.7 million customers for the rest of the world. Now remember our numbers from earlier, each satellite can supply internet to about a thousand people. 
So 10,000 satellites is about 10 million customers. At about $1,000 per year, that's about $10 billion, assuming that you can max out the system. Wow, and you only need $4 billion a year to break even, to make it into profit. At which point I say, whoa, not so quick, Tiger. Remember, two-thirds of the planet is ocean, and beyond the odd ship, paying customers are pretty sparse in places like uh, the Indian Ocean. So if we just take the satellites that are over water at the moment off the table, well, well two-thirds of our satellites are now effectively doing nothing. Now the system looks like it's break-even at best. And this is assuming that you can saturate your network with customers all over the remaining landmass of the Earth. A lot of which doesn't have a lot of um, people who can afford satellite internet. And remember what I was saying, you know, for this thing to break even, you basically got to get all the remaining landmass of the planet saturated with customers. The problem is, currently, they're only launching it in rich areas where people can pay. Starlink is still in beta and currently serves select customers in the northern US, Canada, the UK, Germany, and New Zealand. Like America and Europe which together constitute only about 4% of the planet's surface. And this is before we get onto things like how this thing is a power hog. And to actually bring this internet into your home, you'll need to get a pizza-sized antenna. It will instantly become one of your most power-consuming units over the year. Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV. But anyway, I thought I'd do a quick power test be good uh, as a test box or maybe down the road if we're allowed to move around with this thing. You can see right now it's actually powering up, drawing about 115 watts there. Starlink runs at just over 100 watts continuous, which means that over the year it's going to cost you about 100 bucks with regular electricity costs in America. Okay, well that's maybe not so bad if you're already paying $1,000 for Starlink per year. But what if you live in somewhere that's um, remote, you know, kind of like the place where Starlink's meant to service, where power is a little more expensive? So in places like Hawaii, the electricity costs alone would be some $300 a year or $200 a year in places like California or all of these other places. It's just to run this thing for 24 hours. If you're talking uh, lead acid batteries, because most people won't go much lower than 50% on their lead acid batteries, you'd be talking four golf cart batteries sort of deal. Um, so yeah, it, it takes quite a bit of power. But Elon Musk is like, how can we make this thing's monstrous power consumption sound like a feature, like we did it on purpose, like it's a design? I know, we'll tell people it melts snow. As per Starlink's FAQ, the satellite dish is actually capable of melting snow that gets on it. Starlink's dish comes equipped with a built-in heating element, which keeps it free of snow and ice. Yeah, no kidding, it's got a built-in heater. The entire thing is a built-in heater. Now at the moment, Starlink is basically routers in space. However, later they claim they're going to get these laser communications between the satellites, which will make things faster for long distance. This is because light travels faster in a vacuum than through fiber optic cable. New York to London, a very important one for the global financial system. Starlink latency is under 50 milliseconds, while the current internet is around 70 milliseconds. Yeah, Starlink can't do any of that at the moment. Probably something to do with the fact that the satellites are hundreds of miles or kilometers apart, and you're trying to hit a tiny moving target from another moving target with a laser and then chaining those together. That doesn't sound very easy, but they're promising to launch some satellites that can do it in the next generation. Getting close to launching satellite 1.5, which has laser intersatellite links. Now, where have I heard that before? But let's just call me skeptical on this one. You see, Starlink didn't foresee that launching thousands of satellites might cause a problem for astronomers. This image taken from a telescope in Chile in November 2019 illustrates the problem. The telescope, meant to see images of distant stars and galaxies, instead captured the light trails of 19 Starlink satellites. And when they found out their first solution was, don't say paint it black, don't say paint it black. SpaceX originally tried to paint them like this dark material. The problem was they were still too bright, generally, and they also got pretty hot. Shock and horror. They found out that painting their satellites black caused them to 
overheat. Yeah, that's why they were mirrored in the first place. Then, of course, there's the Kessler syndrome, where basically two crashing satellites, you know, because all satellites travel at a much higher velocity than railgun bullets, cause enough debris that they essentially render going into orbit impossible. But don't worry, Elon Musk's got a solution for you. SpaceX has said its satellites can automatically move out of the way to avoid collisions. But dozens of SpaceX satellites are already disabled and can't move at all, posing a potential threat. Yeah, that's right. The people who can't handle self-driving in a closed loop system say that they're confident that their satellites can automatically dodge space debris. That we are confident we can do today 10 times safer than a human driver. Uh, I feel very confident predicting uh, autonomous robot taxis for Tesla next year. I am absolutely confident that this can be accomplished. I'm, I'm extremely confident uh, of achieving full autonomy uh, and, and releasing it to the Tesla customer base uh, next year. I'm confident this can revolutionize cities and get rid of uh, soul-destroying traffic. It's really, I swear it's not that hard. <laughs> it's... And that's today's video. If you feel confident that this video is correct, then feel free to leave a thumbs up on it. Subscribing is always a good idea if you don't want to miss out on more great content like this. And as ever, if you really enjoyed this video and want to support this channel directly, you can do it through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.